So in 11.6, You're going to get a little bit more on graphing. More on graphing. Don't worry, we're not graphing morons. That's the 13th time I've used that joke. Wow. Isn't that pretty bad? It's starting to even sound, no, it's still funny. I still like it. Okay. You see, the problem is, is that we don't always get things that look like that. We don't get things that look like this. This form isn't, isn't always what we have, and we'd have to do a lot of work to make it that way. We'd actually have to complete the square in order to get this thing, and be able to factor in order to get that thing. And that, that's not exactly what we have all the time. We don't want to waste our time doing that. So there are some other things that we can do with just our general quadratics. For instance, like this one. Hmm. Is that of this form? No, but you can turn it into it. We could turn it into it. We're not going to. That'd be a, that'd be a lot of work. We have some better ways to do it. In fact, more precise ways to do it. This was curve sketching. This is great. This gives us an approximation of what our graph is going to look like and a pretty accurate approximation. What we're going to learn now is how to make it pretty precise without doing a table, okay, without making points. Now, is it still a function? Yep. Is it still a quadratic function? Yep. What tells you it's a quadratic function? Yep. Good. What's your A here? Yep. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Positive or negative one? Uh, positive. So would you say it opens upward or downward? Upward. Upward's right. Exactly right. The problem is, you can't tell me whether this shifts up, down, left, or right right now. Because it's not in the proper form. This number would change if you had it in the proper form. But this number and this number do still tell us things. This right here tells us whether we're upward facing or downward facing, depending on whether you're positive or negative. It tells you whether you're a wide graph or narrow graph, depending on whether you're above one or less than one. This also tells us something. We're, we're going to come to that in just a moment. So I'm going to give you some steps. But trust me on this. These steps have to be followed in order. Can you do that for me? Don't just jump around on these steps. You've got to do them in order. Because at one, on one of these steps, we're, we might be changing signs a little bit. And if you do that before you graph these other parts, it's not going to come out. You're going to get the opposite facing graph. So here's some steps on how to graph. Number one, the first thing you're going to do you're going to find the vertex. The vertex is the highest or lowest point of your parabola. It's where you switch from uh, decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing. It's that, it's that point. Oh my gosh, now how do we, how do we find the vertex? Well, <clears throat> Recognize, firstly, the vertex is a point, right? It's an x comma y, or an x comma f of x, or an x comma. It's what you, you, your x coordinate combined with your, your vertical component there, your horizontal and your, your vertical. You with me on that? It's something comma something. You follow me? This is a point. The vertex is not just one number, okay? You don't say, oh, my vertex is four. <laughs> You can say 4 comma something, because otherwise you just go over to 4 all the time, or 2. All, that doesn't make any sense. We've got to have some sort of point. So here's what the vertex looks like. It is a point. I'm going to show you how to find the vertex. The x-coordinate is given by this little bitty formula. It's not a hard formula. You just got to make sure your signs are right. Uh, by the way, can you all identify A? How much is A again? One. How much is B? Negative four. Negative four, good. How much is C? Negative five. Here's your vertex. Negative B over 2A. Does that look familiar? Does that look familiar? Yeah, that's part of your quadratic formula. That's actually what we subtracted from both sides after we completed the square. That right there gives you your x coordinate for the vertex. Now, wait a second. How do you find that one. Let me find that. Let me, let me get you there, there mentally, okay? If I said y equals 2x plus 3, 
and I said, find the point five comma something. How, what, what, what's it stand for, X or Y? How would you find that? Plug in zero. Plug in, plug in zero? What's our X? If I plug that in to here, is it not going to give me Y? Oh, yeah. So what's 5 times 2 10. plus 3? That would be 13. Are you following me on that? Yeah. That's what we're going to do here. This is a question mark, but we get that by plugging it into f of x, or whatever your function is. Let's try that over here, and we'll stop there. Remember that, that, that clock's 5 minutes fast. I told you that at the beginning of class. So first thing, we're going to find the vertex step number 1. Vertex is a point. It's negative b over 2a. So in our case, what's our, what's our b again? So write this out. Don't do any, any math in your head. Just write everything out first. I have a negative regardless of what b is. How much is b now? Negative four. So am I going to have negative 4 or negative negative 4? What do you think? Negative negative 4. Okay. Over 2 times. What was a? Comma, question mark. I don't know what that is yet. Now, let's, let's, go, let's go slow on this. What's negative negative 4, folks? What's 2 times 1? Comma, question mark. 4 over 2, that's 2, comma, question Now, don't leave it. I'm, I'm having you write this in the point notation the whole way down so you don't forget that it's a point. You see, the problem is I have a lot of people who do this and go, oh, the vertex is 2. I go, well, what do you mean the vertex is 2? You can't just say 2. It means you go over to 2, and then you, you just, where do you go, right? If you mean 2, 0, you'd put 2, 0. You want 2, comma something. It's going to tell you the height now. The way you get your height is you plug this into your original function. Are you with me on that? So what we're going to do off to the side here, that's why I left a whole bunch of room over here. We're going to have f of 2. f of 2. Where am I getting that 2 from, ladies and gentlemen? Where am I getting the 2? Where you, which you just found. Okay, you find this first, and then you plug it in. What's f of 2 mean? Well, it means look back up there. Plug in 2. You're going to get 2 squared minus 4 times 2. I can use parentheses there if you'd like. Minus 5. That's 4 minus 8 minus 5. <coughs> you see where those numbers are coming from, folks? Yep. What's 4 minus 8 minus 5? Positive or negative 9? Negative 9. <clears throat> that right there is your vertex. That vertex is going to tell you the highest or lowest point of your parabola. Next time we're going to work on steps 2 and 3. They're very quick. Uh, steps 2 and 3 are, are very nice. They use what you, you've learned before in this class. This is honestly the hardest part for you. Can you do the hardest part? Yeah. How many will feel okay with what we talked about so far today? Okay, if you're not raising your hand, I'm going to assume you, you don't. Are we okay or, or no? I still got time. I mean, we, we can continue if you, if you want. So if you remember from last time, we're trying to graph this thing a little bit more accurately than just shifting things around. Last section we were just shifting, but when we get quadratic functions like this, it's not really the appropriate form to shift it. Now we can do certain things with it, and the first step to graph these, remember you got to do these in order, the first thing is to find the vertex. The vertex is a point. So when we have this, of course we're going we're gonna to have a point, something x coordinate comma something a y coordinate. How you find that, you take the negative b over 2a, you remember finding the a, b, and the c, right? just like quadratic formula, we use just the a and the b, we plug that in, we substitute it in, we figure that out. How do we find this y coordinate? What do we do to find that, that negative 9 in this case? Plug that x back in. Good, okay, so this is my x, right? So once you find your x, you plug that in for x. That'll give you your y coordinate. That gives you your point. Raise your hand if felt okay about that so far. Good. Now we do have a couple more steps. You see, in order to be really, really accurate with these things, we need to find what's called our intercepts. Our intercepts are where we're going to cross the y-axis and the x-axis. So there's two sets of intercepts we need to find. The y-intercept, that's the easy one, and the x-intercept, which takes just a little bit more work, but hey, you know how to do it already. So step number two, which we're going to do up here, is find the intercepts. If 
find the intercepts. We'll talk about the y-intercept first. That's the nice and easy one. You're going to see this in just a second. To find the y-intercept, by the way, if you don't remember what the y-intercept is, that's the, the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. Every graph is going to cross the y-axis. Not every graph is going to cross the x-axis. I need you to look up here for a second. Remember that with parabolas, we have this shape, right? So you could be above the x-axis, or you could be below the x-axis, or you could be right on the x-axis, or you could cross it once and then cross it again. So we have several options for us to, to have for x-intercepts, but every graph it, with parabolas is going to cross the y-axis. You with me on that? Every single one of them. Here's how you find it. Very, very nice and easy. Can you guys look back up here? Can you tell me what the constant number is? Five or negative five? That's the y-intercept. It's just the constant. And here's how you figure that out. And we're going to graph this in a second, so I'll make my graph up. Which one's my y-axis? Option one or option two? Option two. Definitely. If I want to find out where I cross my y-axis, my x-coordinate is zero, right? You see that? If I plug in zero, what happens? Zero, zero, negative five. That tells me where I'm going to cross my y-axis. So right here when we're trying to find a y-intercept, the y-intercept is simply the constant. It's that c. So the y-intercept is c, just that constant. So over here we're going to put our step two. And we're going to put y equals, or the y-intercept, I'm sorry, I'll be a little bit more specific on that. The y-intercept equals, in our case, what was our y-intercept again, ladies and gentlemen? Negative five. Negative five, it's just the number, just that constant off to the back end. Now, by the way, what if there was no number? Look up here at the board. What if I had x squared minus 4x? That's, that's still a quadratic. What would the y-intercept be there? Zero. Zero. Good, okay, you're getting the hang of it. Now, the next set of intercepts takes a little bit more work, but you're going to see that you've already done this before. This is, this is kind of cool to wrap some things together for you. The next thing we've got to do is talk about our x-intercepts. Talk about your x-intercepts. Well, what we learned a long time ago was when we're actually solving the quadratic equations, when we're solving those things, we're finding out where that parabola crosses the x-axis. Do you remember talking about that? I hope you do. If you don't, look back at those videos because I said it was just a blurb. It was maybe a minute long speech. Uh, but what we're doing is we're finding out if the parabola crosses it once, it crosses it twice. If it touches it, it might only touch it at one spot on that vertex. It might not even touch it at all. We find that by solving the quadratic equation. You remember doing that? We get two solutions. That was those two crossings. Or we get complex solutions, which means we, we don't cross that at all. Or we get one unique solution. That means the vertex is touching that x-axis. But in every case, we found those x-intercepts by solving the quadratic equation. So here, here's what we do. You look back at your quadratic. Our quadratic up here is x squared minus 4x minus 5. If you set that thing equal to 0, if you set that thing equal to 0, and you solve it, you're going to find out where that graph crosses the x-axis. Think about that for a second. Think. This is our x-axis, right? We're trying to find out the x-intercepts, where it crosses. What's the y-coordinate all along this x-axis? Zero. Zero. Yeah. The, the y-value is zero for this whole thing, right? 